In this video tutorial, we will see how to implement a queue from two stacks. So, let us compare the properties of stack in high level, stack and queue. So, stack operates in the LIFO fashion that is lost in first out, whereas queue operates in FIFO fashion, first in first out. And some of the operations that are supported by stack are push, which would add the entry at the topmost portion of the stack and pop would remove the topmost entry from the stack. Top would return the topmost entry from the stack without removing the entry from stack and empty would return true if the stack is empty otherwise returns false. And coming to the operation supported by queue, we have NQ, DQ and empty. NQ would insert the entry into the back of the queue, DQ would remove the first entry from the queue and then return it and empty would obviously return true if the queue is empty otherwise it is going to return a false. So, now that we know that we have two stacks given to us. So, let us consider the first stack as old stack and then the other stack as new stack. Right. So, whenever there is a NQ, so we need to insert that value into one of these two stacks. Right. Let us assume that any new entry that comes to the queue would be pushed into the new stack. So, in that case we can assume that, so let us take uh, some three values. Right. So, three values are inserted into the queue and it looks like this. Fine. So, the bottom line is any time there is a NQ, we are going to push that entry into the new stack and as far as the user is concerned, so he is going to assume a picture like this, right. He has a queue and uh, he has pushed inserted entries like this in this fashion and the queue goes like this and whenever there is a queue is serviced, so he is going to we are going to print the 10 first, right? We are going to process the 10 first and 20 next and so on. So, which is FIFO, right? So, now how about uh, DQ, right? So, we just uh, saw the NQ. How about a DQ? So, if we if we are to directly uh, remove the entry from the new stack and then uh, return that value, which is going to return 30 but the expectation from the user is 10, right. So, obviously, we cannot directly pop entries from the new stack and then return it. So, we we have we can probably use the old stack for that, right. So, let us say we decide that any time there is a DQ, so we are going to pop all the entries from the new stack and then push it into the old stack. So, if we pop out, so the 30 is the first value that is going to come out and then which would be inserted into the old stack like this and then 10, 30 followed by 20 followed by a 10, right. So, now at this point our new stack is empty and then we can uh, kind of decide that anytime there is a DQ, we, we would only remove entries from the old stack, not directly from the new stack. Otherwise, we will not be able to meet the FIFO logic, right. Okay. So, now we would pop the entry from the uh, old stack. Now, we would get a 10, right. If we pop from uh, old stack, we would get the value 10, which is the expected result. Because as far as the user is concerned, it is a queue. So, he inserted 10 first and then 10 comes out first. This is good. So, far so good. So, we, we have seen how to uh, NQ, how to DQ this looks fine so far, right. So, and after uh, after popping out, our uh, new stack would appear like this. We would have 30, we still have 20 and then our uh, new stack looks like this, which is empty now. Let us assume, right, let us assume that there is a new entry now new entry. So, which is, uh, so this is already gone. So, now, now there is a new entry. So, as far as the user is concerned, so he is trying to push a value 40 
and then let's say a 50 how that would affect our internal state of the stacks let's see that we have 30 we have 20 okay so now that we, since we decided that i mean all new entries we are going to push only into the new stack right 40 would be pushed first followed by 50 so now the trick follows right trick comes so how about how to do a dq now let's say if there is a attempt to dq now what do we do both the stacks are both the stacks seems to have some value should we decide to uh, should we move all the entries from the new stack into the whole stack and then uh, uh, remove the top entry or how, how do we do this right so let's assume we are actually we are going to move all the entries from the new stack into the sorry right so if we have if we decide we are going to move all the entries from the new stack into the old stack so this would look like this right 50 would be coming first and then followed by 40 and then if we remove the top element top is 40 and then if we pop out we would be removing that from 40 but as far as the user is concerned he is expecting a value 20 so this operation is wrong right obviously this is neither lifo nor fifo so this is this seems to be totally a different data structure right so which is not the expected outcome so we sh we cannot do movement data movement when there is some entry available left out in the whole stack so now we understand that so now it uh, kind of moves us to a strategy that whole stack can only be filled when that is empty right so coming back to this old state so let me redraw that so this is how our old stack looks and this is how our new stack looks okay now there is a attempt to dq okay how about we dq the directly from we pop out elements directly from the old stack right so we seem to have a 20 and this is the expectation as well right so we seem to have 20 in the top of the uh, old stack and uh, and from the user point of view as well i mean he would expect a 20 so we can start popping directly from the old stack so obviously we need to do a top which would return 20 and then followed by a pop so that would remove the entry from the uh, stack right so that would leave the stack like this right we have a 30 followed by we have 40 and 50 so as far as the user is concerned so he has also got 20 so now these are the remaining entries that are available in the queue and internally it is stored like this the user will which he will not be obviously aware of that that is our design goal right so now so far so good right so we have addressed dq we have addressed uh, nq and uh, empty is obviously if uh, we, we need to find a way how to find whether the queue is empty so when the queue would be empty so it is possible that uh, one of the two queues can be em empty and then uh, the other could have values it is possible that i mean uh, there was a recent uh, dq when uh, the uh, old queue was empty we would have pushed all the entries uh, from the new stack into the old stack so that way i mean we would have only all the entries in the old stack that is a possibility so in, the, in which case the new stack would be empty and uh, this would have all the entries of the queue right so even though one uh, so that uh, kind of makes us understand that i mean one of the queue could be empty but one of the stack would be empty but that doesn't say that i mean our queue is empty so we can say the queue is empty only when both are empty right so we can check for uh, check whether uh, check uh, new stack emptiness and if uh, old stack uh, is also empty right so we know that i mean we can uh, return uh, true 
otherwise uh, false right right this kind of actually addresses the empty function as well now coming to the complexity part any typical stack implementation would support push pop top and empty operations in constant time complexity on the similar note nq dq empty size functions actually on the queue should be supported in constant time but if you notice our dq functionality we seem to do some data transfer from new stack to the old stack which kind of looks like a order of n time complexity but if you closely observe we don't seem to do this data transfer quite often only when the old stack is empty we refill old stack from the new stack so on average the dq functionality still works in constant time complexity so this kind of ends our first part of this video tutorial so please watch the second part of this video tutorial for a c++ implementation of this problem and part 3 would explain the java implementation of this problem if you are not subscribed yet please subscribe to this channel so that you can watch more videos thank you